Josh Rubin, just finished working out. Just kidding. Have, well, I just finished working out, but have you ever wondered why their sweat, the person's sweat next to you, or even your sweat, maybe why it smells like ammonia or urine? Stay tuned so I can educate you on why their sweat or your sweat, not mine, but your sweat, smells like ammonia. Hey, we're back. This is Josh Rubin from East West AM Performance. Today we're going to talk about why does my sweat smell like ammonia. Before we do that, there's a lot of great information below in the description of this channel, so please check it out from a free ebook to a free 15 minute consult to checking out our great books on Amazon as well as our e-courses that we have online. Now back to why does my sweat smell like ammonia. Well, my sweat doesn't smell like ammonia, but we get this question all the time. Now, I can say this, that at one point my sweat did smell like ammonia. And at the same time, if you think about it, you know, before I was doing what I was doing and consulting with people all over the world doing nutrition and doing manual therapy and doing these lovely YouTubes, I actually worked in nursing homes and did occupational therapy. That's what my degree is in um, for many years. Let's just say that. And one thing you know about working with the elderly is when they go to the bathroom and urinate, it smells like ammonia. So everyone says when your urine smells like ammonia or your sweat smells like ammonia that you're dehydrated or you're eating too much protein. Well, of course, that's part of the equation. Let's look at it from a scientific standpoint, a simplistic standpoint, and then one thing you can do to support yourself, or two things you can do to support yourself, or three things you can do to support yourself to work through this process. So I got some notes here. I want to go through them. Hopefully it makes sense to you. The chemical makeup of ammonia is NH3. It's nitrogen attached to three hydrogen bonds. Now, the key to ammonia in your urine and sweat is ammonia. Now, the only macronutrient, go back to what I said, NH3, the chemical makeup of ammonia, is nitrogen atom plus three hydrogen bonds, attached to three hydrogen uh, atoms, sorry. Um, the only macronutrient in the body that contains, or that we take in, uh, or in the body that contains nitrogen is amino acids, which are the building blocks of protein, which help with repair and regeneration. Now, as you know, because you followed our station, our station, our YouTube channel, um, you're, we're the only people that you follow, uh, our word is bond, and you believe us over anyone, you know that because of what we studied and how the human body works and function, the body primarily uses glucose for energy. We get this from the foods that we take in, not from breaking our body down like most other philosophies promote. That's a catabolic state. Now, the body does use a minimal amount of protein for energy at times, as well as predominantly when we're in a catabolic state. So it can use a little protein, so keep that in mind. Our body is always waxing and waning through catabolic and an anabolic state throughout the day, the weeks, the months, the years, etc. That's called life. We're always repairing. We're always regenerating. Well, we should be, depending on how we live, what we eat, how we recover, etc., based on how we live our life. Now, when the body wants to use amino acids for energy, it actually must convert these amino acids for usable energy by stripping the nitrogen atom off the molecule. The skeleton molecule that's actually left behind in this process is further con converted to glucose for fuel. This is not supposed to, well, it's an adaptation, but when this is happening, in order to get rid of the excess nitrogen through this process of that stripping, the kidneys form urea, which is excreted from the urine or the sweat. This is an adaptation so the urea doesn't build up and we get disease or inflammation, etc. Or well, the ammonia doesn't build up. So when you're using protein for energy predominantly, you actually have to convert these amino acids to usable energy by stripping the nitrogen atom off the molecule. And that's what creates down the line that urine uh, or sweat ammonia smell. Now, if the kidneys can't handle, so I'm going to niche in my head, the load of the nitrogen, they'll actually flush it out, and it's excreted through the sweat. That's why some, as we're talking about people, it's more common, I would say, in people our age, 20s, 30s, 40s, maybe 50s, to have that sweat smell because it builds up, it builds up in the body, it has to be excreted, maybe you're dehydrated, whatever it may be, you're not producing energy, so you're not producing enough water, body can't handle the load, kidney can't handle the load, it's excreted through our sweat. 
Hopefully you can follow that. I can, so hopefully you can. If not, rewind it, play it back, pause it, take notes, audio, however you learn. But the bottom line is, proteins, in a sense, contain nitrogen or amino acids. And the bottom line is, when we don't get the right amount of fuel, we go into a more of a catabolic state. So now we're not waxing and waning anabolic to catabolic. We're predominantly using proteins for energy, which we get from breaking down our own tissues. And we've talked about this before. It's called gluconeogenesis. And I know a lot of people are going to email me and say, well, that's normal. We should do this. That's how we can eat paleo or eat whatever. You know, I'm not calling anyone out, but eat a high protein diet and, 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 and get usable energy. That's catabolic. That is 100% catabolic. We should use that in times of stress or need, but not live in that survival mode on a day-to-day -day basis like we're running from a lion. And this is why people have low body temperature impulses, low body temperature high pulses, insomnia, hormonal imbalances, anxiety, depression, blood sugar handling issues, OCD, all these different issues because they're not regulating their blood sugar because they're not taking in carbohydrates or the right types of carbohydrates or the right types of carbohydrates in balance with proteins and fats. So this, that's the simplicity of it. So some things that you can think about to maybe regulate this. The first is low water intake. Everyone says drink half your body weight in ounces a day. Pfft, I don't agree with that. What I agree with is this. Drink to thirst. If you're thirsty, drink. If you're not thirsty, don't drink. But at the same time, you have to always look at everything that we're talking about on an individual basis. If you're eating two meals a day and you're working out and your sweat smells like urine, uh, I'm sorry, urine, ammonia, and you're not thirsty, maybe you really train yourself to be not thirsty. So at the same time, we do need to drink water. I don't care if you put salt in it. I don't care if it's carbonated water. The bottom line is water is a transport mechanism to flush out urea, right? As I mentioned, um, which will uh, make its way to be excreted in the urine. But water is a transport mechanism to help with this, to decrease the amount of ammonia that we have in our sweat. Now, I'm not saying to just constantly drink water and that's going to fix it. It's one little mechanism. How much? I don't know. It's all person specific how much they need, how much they feel that they can take. The bottom line is, if you feel like all you're doing every day is drinking water, you're urinating all the time, you're drinking too much. If you're not drinking any water, just start by drinking a glass a day and titrate up, work from there. I would say on an average basis, you know, I work out pretty consistently, um, five days a week, you know, pretty intense. I would say... Water-wise, how much do I drink? 20, 40, 60. I probably drink anywhere from 60 to 80, maybe sometimes 100 ounces a day. Uh, but pour more 60 to 80. That's what I need to replenish my system. Other things to think about is, am I getting too much protein? So we can kind of split this up. Am I getting too much protein? If you're not logging your foods and you're not seeing what you're taking in, you have no idea what's causing your problems. Are you getting too much protein? Meaning, are you on a high-protein diet? and your carb and fat lower intake is lower than that. That can easily lead to your sweat smelling like ammonia. Um, at the same time, are you, and we can look at it from a different point of view, are you not getting enough carbs to balance out all this protein that you're taking in? So if you feel like you need all this protein, so be it, maybe you don't, and you lower your protein, now your carbs are higher. This is all person specific. At the same time, maybe you're the type of person that needs to increase your carbs because so you're not taking in a lot to counterbalance all that protein. So you're getting too much protein and not enough carbs, or you're getting not enough carbs and too much protein and you need to raise the carbs. So those are some simple scenarios. What does that mean? Well, you got to look at what you're doing and balance it out. It's that simple. Now, how does this relate to thyroid metabolism? Since our approach is basically about nutrition and thyroid health, the bottom line is if we're taking in the right metabolic foods, you know, a lot of non-inflammatory proteins like broth, gelatin, dairy, eggs, whitefish, shellfish, etc. Some muscle meats occasionally, tropical fruits and roots, and saturated fats. If we're taking these in throughout the day in the right food frequency throughout the day, and we're constantly putting fuel on the fire to keep our metabolism going, we create balance in our physiology, we actually allow the body to store glycogen, we regulate our blood sugar, we produce energy, and we pull our body away from this catabolic state, and away from needing protein for energy, thus decreasing the amount of urea and ammonia in the body and decrease the smell of ammonia in your sweat. Peace.